Mushtaq Ahmed, a writer. Abbas Ali, mayor of a municipality in the Midwest of Bangladesh. Abu Zaman, a farmer who has never been online. His digital footprint is so negligible that what you're seeing isn't even his photo. It's a stock image of a farmer in Bangladesh. All three men were charged under the Digital Security Act, the DSA. Abu Zaman's alleged crime was aiding and abetting the publication of false information about someone else in his village. The charges against Mayor Abbas Ali were for comments he made about plans for a mural of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Bangladesh's founder and the father of current Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The mayor said the mural would be inappropriate according to Islam, which forbids idolizing people. Mushtaq Ahmed was arrested in May 2020. He'd posted messages on Facebook criticizing the Hasina government's handling of the COVID pandemic. Ahmed was held without trial for nine months, denied bail six times, and eventually died in jail. These three were among the more than 1,500 cases filed under the DSA. I've seen 16, 17-year-olds taken off to jail because they posted a Facebook status that angered someone's religious sentiment or somehow the police thought that if people see this Facebook status that then perhaps there might be some bickering and just preemptively they take the, the teenager off to jail. We've seen situations where a folk singer is singing about God and her relationship with God and someone sitting in his drawing room listens to the song on, on YouTube and does not like the song and files a case against her. The Digital Security Act has been created in such a way, in such a stringent way, that the use of it is basically misuse. When we, we challenge a legality of the law, what are the standards we need to be thinking of? It is our constitution. Article 26 of the constitution clearly says the state shall not make any law inconsistent with the fundamental rights of the citizens of the country. If they make any such law, that will be considered void. Far from being void, the Digital Security Act, passed in 2018, has doubled down on the colonial era Official Secrets Act and incorporates language from the country's Information and Communication Technology Act, sections the government admitted were abusive and promised to repeal. The law punishes negative propaganda with up to 14 years in prison. It's a vice clamped around all kinds of expression in Bangladesh, especially political criticism and journalism. Many in Bangladesh saw the DSA coming. Three years before it was passed, Kanak Sarwar, a senior reporter with the Ekushe TV channel, was arrested for the crime of broadcasting a speech by an opposition politician. I was in jail in 2015 uh, in a charge of sedition. So that time I see many people inside the jail. Uh, they are imprisoned, they are convicted for uh, their posts in Facebook. People who just click on uh, like button. So uh, when I getting out from jail, uh, this work uh, in my mind that maybe if my friends and relatives are connected with me, maybe they will be uh, in trouble. So, uh, so I, I suggest my friends, my colleagues, my family members do not communicate with me, give, um, block me in the Facebook or unfriend in the, the Facebook. Actually, this is not my desire or my demand. This is the demand of time. Because in Bangladesh, there is no uh, freedom of speech. I have to suggest this. In 2016, after getting out of jail, Sarwar fled Bangladesh for New York, where he now hosts a YouTube channel that pulls no punches on Sheikh Hasina and Bangladeshi politics. He left behind family members who have been targeted. In October of 2021, his sister, Nusrat Shahreen Raka, was arrested and jailed for five months, charged under the DSA with spreading anti-state propaganda on social media. She says she was framed that a fake Facebook account had been created with her name on it. The government is very, very miffed about Kanak Sarwar because of his criticisms of the government. And since he's not in, in town, the next best thing that they could do is target his sister. With the DSA, any person who speaks 
up against authority, their family members are going to be in an equal amount of danger as them. In the hearing, the judge mentioned that Nusrat was accused in the DSA case because of her journalist brother, Konak Sarwar. This is the findings of a high court judge. And this is clear that she is arrested uh, just uh, to uh, stop my voice, just as a hostess. If you go through my sister's case, you will see there is no news analysis, there is no editorial. Just due to their fear that maybe, maybe if I write a, about this subject, I will be arrested. In October last year, Bangladesh's Justice Minister, Anisul Haq, was interviewed by Al Jazeera. He admitted the DSA had been misused and abused and said the government was taking complaints about the law seriously. We are uh, having a dialogue with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Office in Geneva uh, so that we can understand the best practices all over the world. And we would like to stop uh, the misuse and the abuse of this law. The New York-based NGO Human Rights Watch was unconvinced. Two months after that interview and similar statements made by the minister, it said, the ruling Awami League government has made clear it has no intention of addressing a pattern of grave abuses. Authorities used the Digital Security Act to harass and indefinitely detain journalists, activists, and others critical of the government. The law's vague wording and indiscriminate use has meant that many Bangladeshis are now prone to self-censoring. And the list of troublesome topics is long. Just to give you an idea of what actually can get you into trouble under this particular law, is like if you comment on our liberation war, then you will be in, in, in trouble. If you spread any religious opinion, that can get you into trouble straight away. Even children got arrested. If you talk about corruption of any political persons, any government officials basically, that can get you into trouble. You cannot establish a counter narrative onto what you are being told by the ruling party. That is how it works. Here's the strangest thing about the law. You don't actually need to be a direct victim of the law. So for example, you post a Facebook status that my friend things that this is extremely humiliating for me and my friend can, can file a case against you even though my friend is not even a direct victim so the worst case scenario for this would be where you're criticizing a minister on social media which is a right for for people in a democratic country to be able to critique the the instruments of the state and someone would perhaps say that something i've posted is humiliating for the prime minister or for that minister and file a case against me. There's been a noticeable reduction in the number of DSA cases this year. However, no one in Bangladesh is sighing with relief just yet. In February, the government posted new draft regulations pertaining to digital, social media and OTT platforms, video streaming sites like Netflix. An open letter from international media and human rights organizations called the draft regulations devoid of adequate judicial oversight, clarity, and due process, saying they will gut an online space that's already severely restricted. Dhaka has announced it will finalize the regulations by May. The ruling Awami League has one eye on elections coming up next year, and Bangladeshis face the prospect of an even harsher clampdown, worse than under the DSA, on the kinds of voices the government does not want heard.